you will learn about the lowest layer of the ISO-OSI model, the physical layer. This includes the transmission media, cabling systems, and you don't normally know what exact route your parcel will take. And you don't need to know it. It is only important that the parcel is received quickly and within the expected time by the recipient. You are aware, however, that different routes can be taken. Once you have handed in your parcel at a post office, it may be transferred to a different post office or depot by means of a mail van. The depot is connected to further networks which have different delivery times due to their different natures. Depending on the number of depots and the distance between them, a parcel may arrive faster than expected, as expected, or even late. In the case of the ISO-OSI model, the parcel transport network is represented by the physical layer, that is, the first layer. This is responsible for the correct transmission of single bits via the physical channel. It has the task of encoding the signals, specifying the transmission medium, and accessing the transmission media. If you have ever ordered something on the internet, you will know that you can influence the delivery time by selecting a different mode of delivery, such as standard or express. This means that in this case, the parcel delivery company determines the best route for ensuring arrival within the agreed delivery time. In the case of express delivery, a faster route will be used than for standard delivery. In the example for parcel shipment, air, water, vehicles, ships, roads, etc. can be compared to the transmission media in the physical layer. These are the carriers of the information. Transmission media in networks can vary in accordance with the field of application, requirements and the environment. We make a distinction here between data transmission conducted by wire, light or radio. Information is transmitted by light using fiber optic cables. These are used to cover long distances, for example. They are unaffected by electromagnetic interference. Wireless radio transmission is used in mobile applications in particular. In the case of non-stationary components, it is not usually possible for cables to be laid or if trailing cables were implemented, the wear would be too severe and not cost-effective. So-called slip rings are also error-prone and demand a high maintenance effort. Wire is the most widely used and economical transmission medium. When used in industry, however, it has to withstand the harshest environmental conditions, so special shielding is necessary. In industry, as in parcel shipment, stable connections and routes are required between the individual devices. If a traffic network is unable to meet the requirements, parcels will only be delivered at random times, incompletely or not at all. The cabling and connection systems in industrial applications must satisfy considerably higher requirements than in the office environment. The requirements here are based on cable routing indoors and outdoors, as well as exposure to chemical substances, extreme temperature variations and pollution. Flexible implementation in moving applications, such as robots and cranes, may also be a requirement. The so-called twisted pair cables are a mainstay of industrial cabling technology. These are cable lines that are twisted together in pairs. In contrast to Ethernet cables in office networks, industrial Ethernet cables have a special structure, which affords them better protection from magnetic and electrical interference. If you cut open a twisted pair cable, you would see the following. The plastic insulated copper conductors in the center are known as cores. Their thickness will vary in accordance with the type of use, rigid or flexible. The thicker the cable, the more rigid it will be. Each pair of cores is twisted together and enclosed in insulation and the cable jacket. The metallic sheathing also has an isolating function. It is known as the shield. For direct connections between two network nodes, Ethernet cables can be up to 100 meters long. If greater distances have to be covered, additional measures have to be taken, such as installing additional network nodes. It is also important to make the correct choice of connector with regard to strain relief and ruggedness. Cable connectors and cables have to be secure and reliable, as well as able to withstand the harsh industrial conditions. The types normally used in the office environment are inadequate here. In classical Ethernet, all the devices are connected to the same cable line. 
the Ethernet devices are totally independent of each other. A higher level network master, such as Profibus DP, does not exist. The devices therefore compete for access to the bus, making access control measures necessary. Access control itself is a task of the data link layer. It must be able to detect when two or more devices try to transmit simultaneously. For this reason, Ethernet uses the Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection method, abbreviated to CSMA-CD. If the transmission medium is free, the device starts to send. Since other devices are also able to send simultaneously, the sender continues to listen to the transmission in order to detect any potential collision. If transmission is completed without a collision, device 3 recognizes from the recipient address within the data packet that the data is intended for it and therefore accepts it. All other devices ignore the packet. If device 2 now starts to send, a collision will occur. After a randomly generated waiting time, the devices that want to send start another attempt. If this fails too, the waiting time is extended. After 16 collisions in succession, the access algorithm is terminated and the higher level application has to decide on further action. What substantive points should you have learned in this